All right, I hope you're able to see yeah. uh, PowerPoint. We're good. Yeah. Okay, let me just move into a screenshot mode. All right, let me go ahead and get started. Um, again, hopefully everybody can see and hear me. Um, it's actually a tough uh, act to follow after Andre. We use nomic models. They're great models. I thought his presentation was just an awesome demonstration of the power of open source uh, because it's innovative technology that all of us have been able to benefit from and to use in our respective offerings. Um, let me kick off by giving just a very quick um, intro um, into LLMware. For those who haven't uh, heard of us, uh, we've been in open source um, from the beginning. We launched our first offering around 18 months ago. And there are really two things that people would know um, LLMware for. Uh, we have code, uh, so we are a complete, um, you know, Python-based um, unified development framework for building um, applications using small language models. Um, what we have always done, and what's really characterized LLMware from the beginning, is that we're really all about um, open source models first. So for those who use, um, you know, a lot of the various um, you know, development frameworks that are out there, a lot of them start with an open AI or an anthropic or a commercial-based model. Um, but from the very beginning, everything in our code, our classes, our methods, our examples, our demos, everything was really about how do we integrate smaller and specialized and fine-tuned open source models to build really compelling kind of world-class, um, you know, enterprise-grade, um, you know, solutions. We're very focused on document intensive RAG, so we can ingest um, PowerPoint files probably faster and better than just about anybody. We have our own proprietary um, document parsers, fully integrated data and document pipeline. We have an innovative approach to doing multi-model agent workflows, which I'll get to in just a second. And then we really bring um, all the battery packs involved so that you can run models right out of the box, whether it's with GGUF, OpenVINO, Onyx Runtime, or PyTorch. That's on the code side of things. Um, on the right-hand side, um, we actually do a lot um, with models as well. And so we're a little bit unique among startups in that we do both the code side and we do the model side. Uh, you can check out um, our repository on Hugging Face where we really have four main initiatives. Uh, we started launching um, highly specialized, fact-based, highly accurate, RAG fine-tuned models called Bling and Dragon, all the way down to 1 billion to 9 billion parameters on a whole wide range of open source model bases. We developed a proprietary methodology around how do you get uh, fact-based um, you know, uh, answers? Um, how do you avoid, especially smaller models, perhaps drawing on implicit knowledge? How do you get short, clear answers? And how most importantly, do you draw out negative samples where the model cannot answer a question based on a context? So we've rolled that out in our Bling and Dragon uh, model families. We have a set of specialized function calling models they're all between 1 billion and 3 billion parameters, each of which does a specialized function call that can be chained together programmatically then to build very sophisticated and complicated agent workflows, all um, orchestrated with these really, really small uh, models. We also do embedding models. Um, you know, certainly, you know, we, we just heard from sort of a master um, in building out embedding models. We focused on a niche of that market, which is highly um, specialized industry um, calibrated models for the kinds of areas that we work with clients. So we've done one on loan management, on contracts, on SEC regulatory, in asset management, in insurance, very, very specialized industry domains where we believe that we can bring incremental value on top of some of the base um, open source embedding models. And then finally, um, Model Depot, we launched several months ago. It's actually not a fine tuning initiative, but it's, we believe, the largest model zoo um, available today for OpenVINO and Onyx runtime models, including we just dropped around 20 models that are optimized for NPU deployment um, out on the edge. From the beginning, um, we focused on how do you actually get small language models to be accurate, safe, useful. And so everything that we've done from a fine tuning point of view um, we've published, you can check out some of our thought leadership and some of our Medium articles. We've built some of our own benchmarks to compare um, small language models on fact-based accuracy across a wide range of different parameters. And ultimately, um, this is what we've tried to answer for all of our enterprise clients is, um, you know, are the models safe? Um, are they useful? What kind of accuracy level can you expect? What are some of the areas and use cases where you should be careful? 
And then from a code point of view, um, everything from um, how do you do um, generation, um, reducing um, you know, sampling and temperature risk? Um, how do you provide metadata? Um, so um, we provide full view of all the logit analysis token by token across all of our model classes, all of the inference history, a wide set of source verification tools, and configurable safeties and controls that are implemented at seven different points throughout all of our model classes really help to give enterprises a lot of comfort that they can actually build safe and effective um, AI using small language models and heavily tuned then to their own risk tolerance and their own safety and control parameters. All right, so let's get to what um, I really wanted to cover today. Where is local inferencing going? Um, there probably isn't a single person on this call that has not done local inferencing um, at some point. But we wanted to draw out where we see the market going and to really do it um, in, in conjunction with just three numbers that we believe really tell the whole story. First number is 50. What 50 represents are the tops generation, the tera or trillion operations per second that are increasingly being baked into the NPU and GPU capabilities that are being packaged in integrated ways on the edge on um, the, the AI PC and across all the various OEMs, it's projected that there'll be around 100 million AI PCs sold and deployed to enterprises over the next 12 months. Now, many of those enterprises are going to be buying it for prosaic reasons like, you know, Windows 11 upgrade or a little bit better battery life or just part of a normal um, refresh cycle. But what this enables is something that is radically new and different. In effect, um, you're going to have, you know, in enterprises all over the world, the capability of the laptop kit that's already deployed um, for all of your employees to be able to start running on the edge really high powered models. Now, one of the first questions that we hear, you know, as we talk with various enterprises about the AIPC, everybody loves the concept of it, but there's usually a question of, well, but where's the AI or where's the benefit of the AI? What can I actually do to tap into the capabilities that this AIPC presents and all of these tops baked into the chipset? This really comes to the second point. And the second point um, we would say is uh, really about um, small language models. And oftentimes we talk about the parameter size of those models, but we actually think about the, the real breakthrough is from an information compression point of view, how much memory space do you need to fundamentally represent and instantiate models that can effectively encode and decode the core patterns of language? And so the conjecture that we would have, based on the experience we have working with small language models, is that there really is not a single thing, and I mean a single thing, that a pioneer, you know, pioneer model, the foundation models, the big, big models with hundreds of billions of parameters, there's not a single use case that those models can deploy that cannot be replicated by a combination of one or more specialized fine-tuned models between one and 14 billion parameters. So now how do we get to this 10 gigabyte number? Take a high quality 14 billion parameter open source model like Quen 14B or 514B with smart four bit quantization, that's gonna be in the seven to eight gigabyte range for the weights and the parameters to instantiate that model. Add on top of that awesome models um, like models from Nomic, add in some classifier models or re-ranker models, add in some specialized function calling models all of which are in the one to three or four billion parameter range. And when you put together that package, you're gonna be at less than 10 gigabytes of memory. Now, the magic of that is with 10 gigabytes of memory, you can instantiate that on just about any AI PC from 16 gigabytes to 32 gigabytes of RAM very comfortably and effectively. And it's within the addressable space of that NPU and GPU so you get the benefit of the acceleration of running and loading all these models entirely on the edge, and you can really capitalize then on the benefit of the performance delivered by that 50 plus tops. All right, that's the first part of the question of what do you do with this AI PC? Well, the first thing is you can do a lot if you're really thinking about how to bring the right models, fine tuned, specialized, the right workflows, and then of course quantized and optimized for that platform. But the real punchline and we think the real headline from all of this is we think that the marginal pricing of inferencing is going to zero. Not zero, 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 dot one, 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 one. 
we think it's going to zero. Tokens will be free. We believe ultimately that is the cost economics that this is going to drive and ultimately what makes this such a compelling value proposition. Now, when you hear that, and for everybody on this call who's, who's in the AI community, it might be a bit of a scary proposition. Does that mean we all go home? And the answer is, you know, no, I mean, not at all. Um, in fact, what we hear from enterprises is it's actually really hard to realize that value proposition. What's on the right is what most of us deal with every day. It's what most of our desks look like. We're gluing together lots of PIP installs and lots of Docker containers and environment variables and configurations. And that's the world in which we live. But to ultimately be able to deploy this on the edge requires a lot of low-level plumbing to make sure that it's optimized for the underlying and emerging chipsets, that you're bringing in the right type of abstraction and model lifecycle management to constantly bring in the newest, the latest, and the greatest models, and giving enterprises a lot of flexibility and control over what models they're bringing in, how those models are ultimately being deployed on device. You have to do all the dependency management. You have to be able to integrate data pipelines and agent processes in both a hybrid mode with device and with server. You need to be able to make this accessible to business analysts. And truly the whole thing, what we hear from enterprises is they don't want one size fits all AI. Customizable, portable, flexible, and easy for business analysts to develop these types of lightweight applications. That ultimately is what we see as the promise of this. Um, now, what we're rolling out um, to address this need is our commercial offering, uh, which is Model HQ, which brings together um, as a very integrated, unified operating system for model inferencing um, with all dependencies managed, all of the core capabilities around agents, model catalog, the RAG capabilities, the safety and controls, uh, UI development tools, as well as the ability to embed into other applications, API server and client application. This is what we're actually rolling out um, in the next few weeks that we think is a real game changer in terms of bringing together all of these capabilities as a simple piece um, of pluggable software that starts to unlock these kinds of powerful use cases with the AI PC. Uh, now, if you're interested, um, check out our code on GitHub. Uh, please um, check us out on Hugging Face. Um, we love having people come and join. We have a really open and active community on Discord. Um, come and join us. If you're interested in the sneak peek that we just gave around Model HQ, um, either as a, a customer, a partner, if it's just an area of curiosity, please go ahead. You can set up a meeting with us. We've been getting some really good reviews on the work that we've been doing around LLMware on the edge and some of the things that we're really trying to unlock with our new Model HQ offering. So thank you, everybody. Really appreciate this opportunity to talk with you um, on a Saturday morning. Thanks, everyone. Hey, Darren, I want to ask you one question. Uh, actually, it's that slide. Come on, inference going to zero, 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 or true zero. Yep. Let, let's just, just give me one, one, like what would make that not true? It'll be not true yeah. if generative AI has a credible roadmap to AGI. In the absence of that, I don't think so. It's going to zero. All right, I love it. Very challenging, love it.